Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. We have Tim Alexander, our historian, geopolitical and military analyst. And uh, this is the year of the comet, according to NASA. This is also the year of the impending Middle East War, which is uh, kind of, we sometimes get alternating news really good and really bad. I have a feeling that something terrible is going to happen over there. Uh, we also have the impending news of the geopolitical and financial collapse of our credit. And now the United States is suing Standard & Poor's. You've got some amazing new news about what's going on in Israel, including information from the Haifa airport. What's happening over there? Yes, as of 11 o'clock this morning, uh, Israeli time, uh, the Israeli Defense Force ordered uh, the evacuation of all civilian aircraft from the Haifa uh, airport and its, uh, its closing um, to all civilian traffic. Right, so in other words, future. So they're getting ready for uh, probably uh, going to use Haifa as a staging base for Israeli aircraft. Uh, well, that, and they may be very concerned that uh, its nearness uh, may make it more vulnerable than most. Um, yeah, it's it's difficult to say exactly what's uh, what it means, but it, it it's a fairly strong indicator that hostilities are near. Now, I have to 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 uh, qualify that. Uh, you know, things are so crazy over there, and there are conflicting uh, interests uh, at play. We've gone to the edge of the precipice quite a number of times uh, and backed away. However, uh, just a few days ago, uh, we definitely crossed the, the edge of the precipice with the Israeli uh, strike on Syria. Now, <laughs> Uh, that was a, a bit of absolute insanity. Uh, Syria chose not to take the initial bait, uh, but Syria is probably going to do something, and they, they've said they will, to retaliate. But, uh, it could be anything. It could be cybernetic, for all of you know. And also, the target could be America or NATO or Europe. The problem is that Syria has Russian and Chinese backing, and they're retaking all the positions in contradiction to the so-called British UK and uh, American news trying to say that the Assad regime is about to fall. Nothing could be further from the truth. No, uh, the Assad regime has, has in fact, uh, in the last few weeks, made quite a few uh, 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 strategic uh, advances. And uh, Assad has said, and I think he's quite correct in this, that if uh, the foreign powers would withdraw from Syria, that it would all be over in two weeks. Right. That includes, uh, by the way, the foreign funded by Qatar, the Saudi Arabia and Arab Emirates, foreign terrorists, because there's really no Syrian free army that's Syrian. Well, they're, they're out of thousands of uh, rebel fighters, there are uh, maybe 100 or 200 that are Syrian, but uh, and for varying reasons. Uh, but in, uh, in uh, reality, what we're dealing with are mercenaries, and in some cases from Saudi Arabia, convicted uh, uh, murderers and so forth that have been sentenced to death by beheading, and they're given a choice, uh, we behead you or we give you an AK-47 and, and send you into Syria. And uh, given that choice, a lot of people would choose the latter. And, of course, uh, the caliber of people that, that puts into the fight makes a horrible situation even worse and you have had many cases where, where uh, civilians have been tortured, hacked apart, killed uh, and in particular Christian uh, uh, ministers and priests have been uh, uh, killed because of their faith. So ultimately, it's American and NATO tax dollars that are going to kill Christians uh, because they're Christians. And uh, I, I happen to think that that just might be a little bit, tiny bit, maybe unacceptable. Uh, but, 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 but for Obama and his bunch of killers, because he's now under the uh, chopping block, as we said in the first hour with Keisha Rogers. 
uh, they wanted to get a congressional and Senate committee to put together uh, all the documents about how he's setting up his kill list and how he's operating basically like uh, the tyrannical rulers of the former Soviet Union, uh, communist China. Well, kind of like king, kings of old, even before the Magna Carta in, right. in England, but kings of old, they claim the right to be able to lop off anybody's head at, at their whim. And, you know, uh, as an American whose family's been here since the 1600s and had a lot to do with the founding of, of, of North America, i got to tell you, this is outrageous. Uh, it's bad enough that we engaged in torture uh, in Guantanamo and, and uh, in, with 54 other other nations uh, moved uh, people around the world and held them in secret prisons and tortured them. That's not the American way, and it was all based on on lies anyway. Because uh, the Arabs did not do 911, and anybody with half a brain that's looked at the material uh, knows darn good and well that they didn't do it. Uh, what what they did do uh, were, were be victims uh, of uh, Mossad and CIA and Neocom lies. In fact, many of the so-called Arab terrorists who, who supposedly committed 911 have been interviewed uh, months and years later. They simply use their identity and their passports, and the people are still alive. Right. But uh, the mainstream media, of course, won't report that, uh, or if they do, it's buried in the back pages somewhere uh, because, you know, Bush and, and now Obama, they want their war. They're serving the interest of of the global banking cartel that always makes money off war in the interest of the Zionist extremists and uh, they're going to blow up the, the whole world because they're they're evil to the core and and they're ultimately are serving uh, demonic interests, Satan's interests. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's look at, at uh, some of the other things going on. About uh, United States deployed troops to 35 African nations. There's, most people under the cover of all the stuff going on with Benghazi don't know that Obama is now deploying massive amounts of U.S. troops to 35 African nations. And of course, there's well, we also. I knew that was coming when he set up the African Command. Right. You know, I mean, they have a four star general or admiral in charge uh, of the U.S. African Command. Now, I'd like to, someone to explain to me, uh, since officially we're not in World War III, why in the hell we have a, a, a major command uh, called the African uh, Command uh, with, with U.S. troops in 35 countries? Heck, we can't afford to take care of our highways and bridges and everything else. We have. Uh, you know, over half the American population is either unemployed or underemployed, and uh, we we can afford to have troops in 35 African countries. Why? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's and in a, Britain, Britain, uh, I, I linked a story where in the United Kingdom, uh, in many of the uh, National Health Service hospitals, uh, they have found that literally patients are laying there in feces. Uh, they're not getting uh, nurses. They're not getting uh, the, the antibiotics and medical care they're supposed to have. Yet Britain can afford to send its troops to Mali and various other places in Africa. I mean, you know, uh, well, of course, part of this is... Maui has a great deal of gold, and the crooks, uh, the Rothschild crooks and, and their elk, have ripped off all of, all the gold, and the, the, supposedly the gold that's sitting in depositories, either one isn't there or two of it's there. It's already been pledged multiple times. So now Germany and various other countries are getting wise, and they say, we like our gold in our country, and uh, it's not there. So they're going to have to go in some places like Maui and rip them off far more than what they've been ripping them off. Uh, Africa, uh, with the rise of uh, the so-called democracy and the, and the, the anti-colonialism, uh, basically what happened was the... the Globalist powers put in thugs. You have thuggery, and you have this general or that general, and, and you know he, he he rapes his country. The people are near starvation, and he gets incredibly rich. And uh, of course, the the globalist powers get ninety percent of everything. He gets a he gets his five or ten percent, but that makes him a billionaire. And we've seen this in country after country after country. And uh, yeah, yeah, all this is coming home to us because we're now in a depression. Anybody that says we're not an impression is, is either an idiot or, or a 
a liar. And we're in a depression, well, and three, there's every possibility of it becoming dramatically worse. Right. Well, the first negative quarter uh, that's uh, even exceeded all the bailouts was the last quarter of 2012. The first and second quarters of this year will be negative as well. Three in a row. Welcome back, and uh, Tim, uh, let's continue with this analysis. Uh, China's return to Pakistan port near uh, Persian Gulf sets off a regional alarm bells. What's going on there? Well, you know, uh, there are many ways to look at it. I think ultimately the, way, the best way to look at it is we are seeing the formation of multiple war theaters for the coming Third World War. And uh, China and Russia... Uh, will be on one side with a number of other powers allied with them, certainly Iran, Pakistan, and a few others. Uh, NATO and Japan, Australia, probably New Zealand uh, will be on the other side. Uh, the various uh, South American countries, well, it remains to be seen. Brazil just announced a major arms purchase from Russia yesterday. Um, but, you know, in, in, the, in the case of Pakistan in this port, uh, the Chinese made a major investment in a, a Pakistani port, and what uh, has happened now is that, that basically the Chinese are going to run it, and that's the next step to, to using it as a major uh, military facility. It allows um, them to have another route for the Middle Eastern oil supplies. The, the port is fairly close to the Persian Gulf, and um, you're going to uh, see... Um, if war does break out, you're going to see a war between China and Japan. Uh, you're probably going to see uh, a war between uh, India and Pakistan. And Pakistan will probably also be involved in the war uh, defending Iran because Pakistan is literally a next-door neighbor. They have already pledged themselves to defend Iran. Yes, yes, with nuclear weapons if necessary. Uh, you know, you, you, you've got not the perfect storm from hell, the ultimate storm from hell. Right. right. And by the way, we have, uh, you remember in the old, if you watch a documentary film, and you'll see the, the fire starter. He was a, one of the cavemen who was always the guy that managed the fire. He was considered the highest guy in the tribe. And uh, sometimes if the fire starter was not a really good guy, he'd burn himself up. Well, Obama is a bad fire starter. He's going to burn not only him up, but the entire tribe and the world, because the guy is crazy. He actually is trying to inflame the Middle East, trying to destroy the American dollar and economy, trying to create a uh, globalist catastrophe. And as I mentioned yesterday with Professor McCanny when we did a live stream uh, two-part series on the coming the year of the comet, according to uh, NASA, uh, I think it's a very probable event that we may have a kill shot from a CME uh, this summer. I uh, sorry, this fall, when the uh, this comet passes by the arc of Mer um, uh, Mars for over a month, the tails in the Mars, and then passes very, very close to the sun in what's called the heliosphere, uh, and creates a giant CME in an XRM class. If it's uh, Earth-centric, we're in for a lot of trouble, and uh, we can't predict it, but it'll happen this time. But I can tell you that this, the Vatican are watching it because all of their uh, telescopes are comet watching type telescopes. They know, and the tier one scientists that Dr. McCanny's talked to have verified to him over and over again he's right on. They can't talk publicly because they will have to say, cease to, as Bobby Burns says, cease to exist in this mortal coil, and they shall leave the third rock from Saul, our yellow dwarf star. <laughs> Comets are harbingers of war, and uh, hopefully that that worst case scenario won't happen. But we do know by all war of some kind is going to happen. It says in the Bible, wars and rumors of wars. I can't tell you how big the war will be, but we're already in the economic phase of war right now. The economic phase of World War Three is already well into it. It started with 9/11. It really amped up in 2007, 2008, and now with the impending uh, debt crisis, this is getting real serious. And the Chinese two weeks ago freaked out when they thought that all of their up to $3 trillion of treasury notes were going to go poof. 
Uh, the Chinese are aggressively stealing everything they can cybernetically in uh, industrial patents. Uh, they're trying to get trade zones set up in America. They want to buy America. They don't want to invade it. They want to just buy it. Well, for instance, uh, the Cirrus, which is uh, an aircraft, uh, is the most advanced uh, piston engine aircraft uh, sold in the world today. A friend of mine has one. It's all composite, whole airframe. Uh, it says it's a fairly conservative plane farm, but it's very, very modern, very up-to-date. It has the all-glass cockpit and a ballistic parachute in case something fails. You can actually parachute the entire plane down. Um, it's it's leading-edge, state-of-the-art for civilian single-engine, uh, normally a fixated uh, you know, aircraft. And it's now owned by a Chinese company. And uh, they're coming out with a single-engine jet that's, uh, you know, is going to be a, a really hot seller. But it's all it's owned 100% now by the Chinese. And, uh, look, the globalists set this up because China has way over a billion people, about 1.3, 1.4 billion people. And they were able to go in and pay these people uh, just literally a few pennies per hour. Well, now, those rates have been rising somewhat. Uh, That's why, in fact, they're rising so fast now, because of the rising middle class. They're about to have an implosion. In fact, I'd say it's more likely to have a revolution in China than even any nation in the Mideast. China is hanging out by its fingernails right now. Yeah, just within the last 24 hours, the People's Republic has banned the advertisement <laughs> of, of luxury items. Uh, because, essentially, you know, there there is a, a tiny uh, growth super elite who have an insane amount of money and many of them are, are communist party uh, all of them and, ALL there's yeah. a word called all yeah. if you're not a communist yeah. party member you don't get access yeah. to land party credit uh, or uh, you'd be able to take over land and kick the farmers off it, the subsistence farmers off it 84 million Chinese communist PLA members own the other 1.3 billion people yeah yeah and of course many of uh, the, the military is deeply involved in everything too they have their own factories and everything but the the great bulk of the Chinese people now they they have air conditioners in many cases and there are more and more cars and they're they're getting more but it's a lot of their their work conditions are very similar to what people had in the 1800s with the uh, rapid industrialization of Europe and North America and the kind of near slavery type conditions. That's why you had a rise of, of unionism. But of course, if you do that in China, they'll shoot you. Now, uh, but you know, as you said, the, the, the contradictions in within the, a society that's supposedly one communist uh, and two, you have the, the uh, a growing but tiny super elite of people that are literally are millionaires, multimillionaires, billionaires, and the rest of the country being either destitute or maybe they have more than what they've ever had before, but they're still relatively quite poor, and around them they see these people driving Rolls Royces and so forth. And uh, it, 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 it is causing severe political problems. And of course, in addition to that, uh, there are almost no environmental regulations that are either exist or if they do exist are enforced. So you have literally cities that are absolutely, uh, people can't breathe. The pollution is so bad. And that's part of why they can be so competitive uh, against us because we, you know, we like to breathe here. And uh, the poor peasants over there, their toes just to suck it up, but they have lots of rights. We'll be back. Tim, I have a couple of other questions. Um, we have touched on the uh, drone assassinations or egregious abuse of power by Obama. There's a video link. Uh, next question, is America a police state yet? Answer, yes. And uh, read the entire full article. And there's a bill introduced in U.S. Congress to end the federal uh, marijuana prohibition. Uh, what I've said repeatedly on this show is that drugs should be medicalized which means your doctor and your school 
and your employer should be doing MRO testing. And if you're on these things, you should be referred for treatment. Not yeah, treatment. I, I just I just don't believe in in in, in criminalizing marijuana because I, I we have uh, a prison population percentage of our population greater than North Korea and China, and I just think that's I I can't see a, a busting some kid because he's smoking a joint when at least the last two presidents have admitted they've done the same thing, and uh, I I think it's it's a very minor crime compared to the really serious drugs that are out there and I, I just I, I we, we need to work on reducing America's prison population. You know, the sign of a very large prison population is very much a sign of a police state. And unfortunately, you know, we're right there in the top of the world. Uh, and these guys in prison, I mean, you know, they work for a few pennies a day and they make things in many prisons. And, and of course, the prisons, uh, if they're private prisons, they get 50000 or so dollars a year for each prisoner and uh, you know the, the food that they, they give them is uh, uh, they're lucky if they get a grilled cheese sandwich or two three times a week that's their um, that's their the, the top of the uh, hit parade for them in terms of food I mean it's it's our prison systems are terrible and they create problems they don't solve any problems and uh, we know this and I, I just uh, I, I don't think marijuana is good for you I, I'm not pushing it don't don't get me wrong but I well, medicalize it when it's, if I had an employer coming in and someone's operating heavy equipment and they show positive for marijuana I want them clean if they show benzoylgonines, which means they're using cocaine, they're suspended until their drug tests come back clean and they're referred to a substance abuse professional. Same way as blood alcohol levels, etc. Easy to do. You can even install equipment in a car that can measure what's called a course of stagmus, and as soon as it happens, it would send out immediately a signal to indicate that the vehicle is going to be shut down and calls the cab company to pick you up by your GPS coordinates. That's what I think needs to be done. I think that we need to stop chucking people into prison and treat it as a medical problem and stop thinking that we can outlaw drugs just like alcohol. You can't. You have to make people responsible. Well, we tried but, it in prohibition. It didn't work, you know. Well, the thing is, in, in business, though, people, if they're responsible, and they use a small amount of marijuana on a weekend, I don't have an objection, but I do have a problem when people using medical-grade marijuana every day and they're a zombie because a certain percentage of people, <laughs> when they take it, they literally will not advance emotionally, and they basically become kind of floating on cloud nine. They don't exist anymore. Their emotional state's fused at an earlier age in their development. There are people that uh, uh, will, uh, they have addictive personalities, and whether it's tobacco or cocaine or marijuana or alcohol or any number of substances, they are addicted uh, because it's kind of a, a form of self-treatment for what other psychological problems they have. And um, those people are the exception but seven uh, percent of the population use anything. Yeah, so, yeah. Seven percent of the population has an addictive potential, and sometimes it'll be other people that will, under certain circumstances, they get a health problem, they get a psychiatric problem, they get a head injury, uh, they develop serious uh, crises, and they'll develop addictive behaviors. But it can be treated. You can see psychologists. You can have nutraceuticals like our combine, Posenol. Yeah, but what you don't want is Paxol and all right, those. Right. Uh, uh, well, the first off, the psychiatrist. Remember, I consider psychiatry a cult within medicine. No, it pretty much is. Yes, it's a cult. It's uh, people need to understand that that psychiatry is not rational. Well, it, uh, a lot of the basis for psychiatry and psychology uh, was uh, uh, rather demonic in my well, opinion. Well, it was developed by psychiatrists like Freud that was actually... Yeah, Sigmund Freud, people, that was the name was, I was trying to think of. Well, it was using, uh, using drugs on his uh, drug trips, on his patients, and uh, a lot of the theories were based on speculation 
which they had no way of validating it. When you have a scientific method, you have to validate the neurobiology of what you're talking about. You can't develop a... Uh, Dr. Henry McLeod on his site, uh, I think it's yesterday or today, last, well, the last week, he's had a couple articles on Sigmund Freud and, and uh, his connection to some really nasty demonic stuff. Uh, by the way, before uh, I forget, uh, we you, you touched on uh, is uh, the article I linked is uh, America a free state, uh, yes or no. And uh, there are four things that uh, this article says. It's really, it's really good. It says, another way to judge the degree of totalitarianism is to answer your, ask yourself four questions. Number one, how many peaceful activities would make you a criminal if you did them? And in his book, Three Felonies a Day, How the Feds Target the Innocent, civil rights attorney Harvey Silverglade argues convincingly that the average professional in this country wakes up in the morning, goes to work, comes home, eats dinner, and then goes to sleep, unaware that he or she has likely committed several crimes that day. Why? Well, the answer lies in the very nature of modern federal criminal laws, which have exploded in number, but also become impossibly broad and vague. You're a felon whether or not you have done anything wrong. And, you know, that goes to, to when you, you have a, a law passed that runs into hundreds of pages. That's insane. No, uh, if you put a bunch of attorneys in a room and gave them a copy of it, you'd have, uh, for as many attorneys, you'd have at least that many opinions, if not uh, more than that. You well, there, and I call the, from the Leninization of the law, which means, you, as he said in the quote from Vladimir Lenin of the Soviet Union, the founder, he said, show me the man and I'll tell you the crime. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, number two on on this little hit parade, if whether you're in a free society or police state, how much of your life is spent working to pay taxes and other government fees? According to the Watchdog Tax Foundation, in 2012, Americans worked 170 days into the year from January 1 to April 17 to earn enough money to pay this year's combined 29.2% federal, state, and local tax bill. Now, the figure hardly captures the scope of economic enslavement, and the problem is not merely the taxes that consume a third of your life, it's also the unseen costs. For example, compliance with all the taxes and regulatory costs, uh, small to medium sized businesses, one in every three dollars. Now, that's, that's just compliance. That's not the tax itself. And these expenses get passed along to the consumer while the benefit goes to the government. Uh, number three on the hit parade, are you free or not? Uh, number three, how freely can you relocate your assets and person outside of state jurisdiction? And there's at least three stages in the relocation of the most simple asset, money. You must establish a foreign account, get the money under your control, and then transfer it. The easiest step should be to get your own money. After all, banks are merely holding it for you. That step is far from easy. In an article entitled, Get Your Assets Out of the U.S. Now, a relocation expert warns that the bank will make a federal case out of it, literally. You have to wait from five to ten days for the transaction to clear. The manager will begin to ask you a lot of questions, and he or she is required to do it. And the scary part, when you tell them you want to withdraw 100000 in cash or wire or it to a foreign bank, they are required to file to file an SAR farm, and they are prohibited by law from telling Telling you that they are filing it. They can freeze your account until they are satisfied that what you want to do with your money is legitimate. And those are just some of the problems arising at one stage of what should be the simplest part of relocating assets. Uh, and then four, how freely can you use your assets and your person within the state jurisdiction? And that, that varies, but increasingly everything is taxed, everything is illegal. Uh, you, you see, kids are arrested for having a lemonade stand. Yeah, I know. Amazing. Back in a moment with Tim Alexander. Welcome back, and Tim Alexander. Um, in this last segment, um, let's do some predictions, and we're now heading into the first part of the second month of the year. Um, I'll give my two or three predictions. I predict that we're going to have an expanding war in the Middle East. I predict that we're going to have a bank holiday and devaluation of the currency. I predict that Obama will get uh, his, his uh, carte blanche to continue his 30,000 drones and that he'll still continue killing Americans both overseas and here. 
I predict that uh, he will eventually become castrate once the debt ceiling is hit, and uh, the sequestration is going to start really biting. The Pentagon is incredibly wasteful, and uh, Medicare, Medicaid, you don't have to get rid of the social safety net. You need to make it efficient. What Obama's answer, though, is to cut services rather than make the system efficient and cost-effective. The same pills made in the same machine are three times as expensive for Americans as it is for Canadians, for example. So uh, what we have is the worst of the worst happening, and then I predict that by this fall, the uh, comet that's passing by the sun will create a CME, and it's probable that if it is Earth-centric, it will wipe out a good part of the northern hemispheric power grid. So uh, this is the year of the comet. This is the year of the economic downturn. I know I watch my favorite show, both for comedy and reality, is Doomsday Preppers. If you haven't watched it, you need to. You'll laugh, your, you'll laugh until you have a hernia, and then it'll scare the hell out of you. And then you'll say, have I prepped enough? And Can I make my three predictions? Yeah, make your three. Well, I, I predict that uh, B.B. Benjamin uh, Yahoo will go down as the, the great peacenik of the Middle East, and he will solve everyone's problems and re- recognize the Palestinian state. I predict that the uh, economic recovery, which is well underway in America, will expand and spread to Europe and we'll all be uh, r- rolling in bucks and uh, if you believe the first two uh, <laughs> I have a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you no no I got one on the moon I got one on the moon that's even better <laughs> Uh, yeah, we we are in a global depression that uh, the the in the first stages of it is not a recession is certainly not a recovery it is a economic depression and we are moving very close to a total uh, economic collapse and that yeah. is by design they have set this up where it has to fail that or you, you literally have to come in and denude them of their power and and strip the Federal Reserve and everything else, and they'd rather kill us all before they let that happen. Well, the, the, the thing that's going to happen that will stop that is a number of states and the sheriffs will deputize the citizens of the states, have a legally uh, certified militia that's properly trained, and will say to the federal government, the middle finger. Yeah, well, you know, the, the, the Constitution is very clear. The powers that are not specifically granted to the federal government are reserved to the states and to the people. Right, and and uh, most of uh, federal law is based on assumptions of power that are not specified in the Constitution. Now that that's a fact, and uh, everyone that knows anything about American history and American constitutional law knows that. Right. But uh, uh, you, what you have is you you have criminals that are in charge of our government. A hundred years ago, they started the uh, the Federal Reserve, which was a scam to. Counter, legally counterfeit money, loan it to the government, and collect the not only the compound interest on it, but to collect it back the the, the, the principal from something they created out of thin air. Uh, they knew that it was going to require a great deal of money to pay all this back, so that's why they did the amendment for the federal res- or for the uh, uh, income tax. There was only one little glitch. They were about one state shy of uh, sufficient states to ratify. And a couple of the states that did ratify it changed the wording, which invalidated. So the the amendment that uh, approved the U.S. income tax was neither passed, and a U.S. district court has has recognized that fact. Right, I think but that we have various experts to ignore that. Yeah, we have various because, experts that have proven that, right? So, I'm sorry, so we have expert, public experts that have proven that and been touring the country for years. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they, they choose to ignore that little fact and that little bit of constitutional law and, 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 and uh, but, you know, besides that, I mean, you, you, you had, uh, FDR manipulated things to, to bait the, the, the Japanese to get us into the Second World War. Uh, uh, the same character that, that signed the law for the Federal Reserve, uh, Woodrow Wilson got us into the First World War. And then, of course, uh, they, they killed JFK and RFK and JFK Jr. and Martin Luther King in broad daylight, uh, in most cases, and they got by with it. Uh, and the, the criminals have been in power ever since. And, uh, I mean, these are world class criminals. They go back, uh, the, the apex of that rat hill is the Rothschild Empire. 
and these are demonic devil worshipping uh, uh and Jews who are centered in Europe uh, in particular in the, the what they call the city of London which is a small uh, uh, elite area uh, uh, within great London itself and uh, these people uh, are are monsters and they create wars uh, so that they can profit from both sides and we've allowed them to do this stuff for well over 200 years uh, we've allowed them increasingly to affect all levels of American society uh, we allowed them to kill President Kennedy and then Robert Kennedy and uh, you know even even JFK Jr. was killed uh, they blew off the tail of the plane and went straight in the ocean and that's why they cremated him and buried his ashes at the sea in the sea because they didn't want any uh, autopsies done they didn't want anything done and you're, you're dealing with the most evil criminal element on the face of this earth and people that uh, are educated and, and uh, uh, aren't willing to accept every lie that they float down the stream. People, they know that. Yet, uh, you know, they, these characters still get by with it. We don't know who Obama is. Hell, we don't know who his dad is. We don't know who his mom is. Uh, we don't know where he was born. We don't know what citizenship he has. And yet he got by with that, he got elected twice, and they just ignored countless uh, lawsuits and everything else. The, the man uh, you, has used false uh, uh, social security numbers. If I did that or if you did that, we'd be facing felony charges. He does it, and, and he gets by with it. And it's one thing after another. Modern medicine is, is so corrupt. Uh, you, you can go in for, for practically nothing, and it ends up being thousands of dollars. The majority of people, they declare bankruptcy, declare bankruptcy because of medical bills, and the majority of them have health insurance. And now with Obama, the Obamacare, it's, it's ten times worse. And it, it, America has become a horrible tragedy. It's become a horrible uh, nightmare. It's nothing like it used to be. And it's not simply because people have changed or there's more people. What it is, is it's become systematically corrupt and evil uh, across the board. And it's because the people at the top are rotten and us at the bottom, we've allowed it to happen. We continue to allow it. We don't have to put up with this crap. And how many countries are we in now? We're, we have troops in 35 African countries? Why? And how many countries, are, and, and now we're getting ready to, to, to get involved in the great big war with Syria and Iran? Well, we know damn good and well Iran has advanced biological weaponry that can kill somewhere between the third and two-thirds of every American, man, woman, and child. And we want to have a war with them? Why? Because the globalists want it? Because BB Netanyahu is satanic high? Uh, horse uh, wants it, uh, so we should all die for these characters. Uh, you know, uh, folks, you, it gets to the point you have to put your feet down, and you have to raise hell about this, or you're not going to be around much longer. And this is where we're at. And they want to take our guns, and they have all these f horrible false flag events from 911 to this latest thing when they send three Mossad hit team members in and machine gun uh, a, a kindergarten class. A kindergarten Garden class right before Christmas, and uh, and then on that basis we're supposed to give up our guns. I mean, it, it, the the stuff these characters do. You, a normal person, if if you said I'll give you a million dollars, come up with something outrageous, they couldn't come up with anything. Well, that, that, that's outrageous. actually the best cover. They do it so outrageously and so over the top that if you propose the real uh, theory, what happened? It's not even considered a conspiracy theory. You're considered psychotic. Yeah, well, the psychotic happen to exist in the White House and the highest levels of government uh, in, in NATO nations all over. And uh, they're monsters, and their god is money, and their god is Satan. If you could speak to the people in the globalist chambers that call the orders, they would answer back in a multi-voice that says, Our name is Legion, for we are many. Yes, well, and they're going to hell. Folks, get right with God. Yes, indeed. We'll be back with uh, Hour three tomorrow with Tim again. Major updates. We're going to have Jerry Strybos back from 
Saudi Arabia, and he has the PISD syndrome or PIS, post-Islamic stress disorder. We'll talk about that in wellness issues. Tim Alexander, Chris Harrison, nuclear expert tomorrow. Major things developing at Fukushima.